Ah! In today's video, I'm going to be unboxing and setting up this here printer, the Ender 5 Plus. Let's go. So I've always been a fan of Creality 3D printers. I think they work really well and are very good value. Lots of other printers, manufacturers on the market like to copy them. So that's always a good sign. The one thing that has always annoyed me about Creality printers is that a lot of them have a moving bed. For me, it's quite illogical to have the heaviest part of the printer moving around. That said, I do realize that it's done to make the printer cheap. However, when I saw this one here, the Creality 5 Ender Plus pop up, I couldn't resist buying it and having a look at how it prints. Let's get it open, set up and see what we think. You can see, it's quite a big box. Top layer, bit of foam packaging. We've got the bed. It's already installed on this section. The guidebook, 250 gram spools, spool holder. We've got some extrusion frame here. Box of knickknacks here, presumably replacement parts. Now we've got the power cable in here as well. A few cable ties, Allen keys, some flush cutters. We've got a scraper, the bolts required, USB uh, cable, flash drive and some little clips. Hopefully all will become clear later. I'll set this box aside so that I can reuse it. Right, let's get this thing out. Main printer gantry here. One side of the printer. The other side. On the last foam layer, we have the base of the printer, which has the control box and all of the cables. Right, now the giant box is out of the way, I can lay this out a bit neater and see what we're working with. Now we're gonna go straight on to the assembly of the printer. And we have to start with frame assembly part one. It says to take the base of the printer and keep the front screen facing you. Then we're gonna use this 20 by 40 aluminum and profile. Okay, so we've got these M5 by 25 screws and we've got these four lengths of 4020 aluminum profile. The plan is to put the screws through the holes already drilled in the bottom frame and attach these 4020s in each corner. Okay, so those are installed. On the guide it said to make sure that the holes in the top of these pieces are running across the printer and indeed installed at the top rather than at the bottom. That's all good. So we can go on to the next bit. We're now going to install the head of the printer. Naturally, that will have the extruder at the back and then the fan of the printer facing forward. It's starting to take shape now. There's a hole drilled in each of the four corners and it wants a screw put down through the top first. Once the ones on the top are done, a screw can then be put horizontally through the corners of the printer. The two horizontal screws at the front side can be used to adjust the belt tension if you need to at a later stage, but for now, these have gone in nice and tight. So that's good. Next step, it says to turn the front of the bottom so that it is facing me, like so. It's then time to put in the Z-axis. To do that, I have to move the Z-axis plate into the center and then attach to the frame using the other size of M5 screws. Can then proceed to do the same again on the other side. And there we go. Then it says to check everything on the bed is moving smoothly, which it is. Okay, it's bed installation time. I find the instruction manual quite wordy, so I'm just gonna sort of have a look at this and see what seems logical to do. In other words, level it up mostly. 
align the pre-drilled holes with the holes that are on the bed or on the frame I should say which all looks good right then let's consult this so using the M4 by 10 screws and putting a washer on them to then connect the bed to the z-axis frame whenever putting lots of screws in like this I always find it's good to put them all in loosely and then tighten afterwards if you tighten them first then you can find it can be a real pain to get the later ones in If you've got a level to hand it's probably not a bad idea to use it to level the bed just to make sure everything is going in straight. There's then an incredibly wordy set of instructions which I think basically means put this on and so I should do that. It goes on at the back there we go, it's pretty solid. Now it's time to connect up all the cables. I'll push in the Bowden clip, like so. And there you have it. The printer is then set up. It took me about an hour, so a fair bit longer than the old moving bed style Krause printers would take me to set up in about 15 minutes so there is that to consider although I do genuinely think this style of 3D printer is far superior and that is why they generally are a little bit more expensive this one was £480 on a deal from uh, the UK Amazon seller Comgrow who I've used a number of times in the past and I've always been pretty happy with their service my first impressions on this machine, I love the fact it's pretty sturdy. The assembly was pretty easy. There were things they could have done to make it easier. Um, some bits of the screws were fiddly, etc. In terms of first impressions of the look of the machine, it looks nice. You've got a nice big build volume. It's 350 by 350 by 400 in the Z axis. So that's a really good size. And We've also got a Bowden setup, so this should be quite light and move around quite nicely. It's unlikely to have too many artifacts of the printing. If there are any, it will probably be in the Y axis because this, this setup here is still quite heavy and belt driven for quite a heavy section of the part. But I imagine that the, the X axis will be good at least. Looking forward to seeing how this prints. If you are too, then don't forget to like this video and subscribe so that you're notified when the next video is posted. Check back in a few weeks and I'll have done plenty of prints with it. The one thing I would say is that the uh, cable management leaves a lot to be desired. We've got just sort of a big load of cables spilling out the back and uh, yeah, not quite sure the best way to deal with them to be honest. Uh, it's certainly functionality over practicality for, uh, for this implementation. But anyway, that's it from me. I'll see you next time.